Good evening and welcome once again to our mentoring session. And our mentoring session for tonight is entitled How to Write Thesis Introduction and Background. This is a very interesting title also. Now, usually researchers are confused no? um, between the difference no? in terms of preparing introduction and background. So tonight, will be an opportunity for us, for you, to, to, to determine uh, the, 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 the boundary between the two, the difference between the two, as to the content, no? um, as to the way we're going to write our introduction and background. So we will be providing you tips no? and uh, important considerations for you to write introduction and background. Now, actually, Introduction and background is part of the content or contents of chapter one. Now, your chapter one is the problems and each background. So, these are the contents of your chapter one. Number one, introduction, background, theoretical framework, conceptual framework, uh, statement of the problem, scope and limitation, significance of the problem, definitions of terms. Now, as to item number one and two, uh, this is our topic for tonight. Now, as far as items number three, four, and five, these are already in uh, a video form, video version, readily accessible and available in my channel. Okay? So you can all the time access those, no? Items three, four, and five. So now going to the writing of introduction. So these are some important uh, reminders and considerations for you to write your introduction. Number one, your introduction should provide the readers with complete idea or picture on what is the study on about. So it is about providing your readers the, 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 the entire idea or picture about your study, no more, uh, no less. So uh, it is necessary also uh, to locate, you know, to really understand and locate your parameters, your boundaries as far as your study is concerned, okay? Furthermore, your introduction should allow readers to see the scope and coverage of your study. So you may think of who are involved in your study. Uh, you may think of um, where your study be conducted. Okay, who are involved in your study. Okay, and you need also to discuss, no? as presented in here, your logical discussion of its objectives. What are the objectives of your study? Now, as far as objectives are concerned, there are two types. Number one, terminal objective. So terminal objective refers to the ultimate uh, intention or output no, of your study, of your study. And enabling objectives, these are the objectives that um, support you know, the terminal objective um, to realize, no? I mean, to realize your terminal objective. So therefore, without this um, enabling objectives, the terminal objectives could be um, impossible. Okay, so there is a, a, a helping situation or supporting situation between terminal and enabling objectives. Now, there are times that researchers also um, are confused about the difference between uh, objectives and statement of the problem. Okay? Actually, they're the same. It's just a matter of how you uh, state that or write that. Now, usually in an objective form, researcher starts to uh, write uh, the word to. For example, uh, to determine the demographic profile of the respondents in terms of age, gender, 
educational attainment, something like that. Now, if you are going to convert that objective form of, of stating, no, you may opt to have it in a problem statement uh, form or SOP form or a statement of the problem form. Now, you, you need not to, to um, uh, confuse about it, but you only remove the word to and replace it with um, what, how, questions. Like for example, in the case of to determine the demographic profile of the respondents in terms of age, gender, educational attainment, and all, you may just say what? What is the demographic profile of the respondents in terms of age, gender, educational attainment, and all? So you just re replace the two with a question. Or, or how the respondents assess the social and economic factors that affects okay, the performance of the newly hired teachers. So the term used there is an SOP form. And it uses the question how okay how the respondents assess the so the social and economic factors that affects a particular behavior okay so that is also uh, one and here stated also and it should be linked to the sop so therefore your introduction should be linked to your SOP or statement of the problem. So there's a need for you to present also all your objectives or statement of the problem or the problems, okay? Another important consideration about your introduction is um, your introduction should present the existence of unsatisfactory or problematic conditions. So it is very important that the readers could feel, could see, could sense that your current study is based on what? Okay, is considering on unsatisfactory or problematic condition of a particular office, community, barangay, city, not depending on uh, the scope of your study. So it should make your readers realize that there is an existing unsatisfactory problem. Or in other words, felt problems that needs solution. Okay? Okay, so that ends up your introduction. Now, let's go to your background, the second item in the row, the background of your study. Now, how are you going to create or formulate your background? Your background must discuss the historical background of your problem or your study because your study is composed of um, two or more problem objectives or problem statements. So there, what is the historical background of your study or problems? Okay, so in here, you may cite universal situations related to your uh, study, yeah, universal backgrounds, okay, about your study. You may start um, uh, stating you know, situations internationally, uh, locally, at the national level, at the city level, at the barangay level, at the community level, or at the organizational level, your own organizations. So depending on 
uh, the local. No? It depends on the local of your study. No? The extent of the local of your study. One more thing about writing your background is um, the researcher or candidate um, should show okay, um, his or her earnest desire to have a deeper and, clear, and clearer understanding of a situation so he or she will be a better or in a better position to initiate remedial measures or to find a better way to improve the situation. So um, just a while ago, there's a need for you to, to let your reader know that there is an existing problematic situation um, uh, in the local of your study. So this time, you need to show your earnest desire to have a deeper and clearer understanding of a situation. So with that sense, you can have you know, a better position to initiate remedial measures to find a better way to improve the situation. So this can be manifested you know, uh, in your recommendations. You can recommend well because you know better, you understand better you know, uh, with the uh, situation. Okay, one more thing about background of the study. You now, you need also to present the geographical condition of the study local. Now, this time, it's no more about universal, international conditions, national conditions. You now, you are now trying to narrow down or focus on your own geography or your own geographical uh, location where your study will be uh, undertaken or will be conducted. So you must narrow down your uh, discussion on that particular um, uh, local. Another no, about background of the study is the researcher no, has to give a strong justification of why the present study has to be undertaken or conducted. So what are your justifications? Okay, Why there is the need for you to conduct this study, the convincing power, no? present that. Okay, So um, of course, you can think of as of uh, different significant scenarios no? why your study has to be conducted. Okay, so that completes no? uh, the tips no? for you to create your introduction. Just follow that. Okay, observe logical presentation of those and your background of the study. Okay, so I hope it, it can help you in creating your own introduction and background. Now, these are the ways forward, you know, as far as um, our mentoring sessions you know, are concerned. Now, one and two, item one and two, done already tonight. Three, four, and five are already available you now in, in my channel. Now, we have here remaining six, seven, and eight items, scope and limitation, significance of the study, and definition of terms. We will be taking this uh, in the future. Okay? So, there. Now, I would like to present to you and introduce to you uh, my, my, my new book no, entitled Academic Research with Practical Statistics and Thesis Writing, no, published by uh, books, at iba pa, publishing company in uh, Mandaluyong City, Philippines. And of course, I have here one, you know, seems not to be related in, uh, in, in research and thesis writing, but um, 
uh, please allow me no, to introduce to you another book, Aklat Manual Tungkol sa Buhay at Mga uh, Gawa o Ginawa ni Rizal. Rizal is our national hero. No? National hero of the Philippines, Dr. Jose Rizal. So I hope you could um, grab an e-copy of uh, this book or you may have it no, online also. And I will be indicating the link no, below um, for your access. Okay, so thank you. And um, uh, for you to be notified of um, our future uh, videos and mentoring session, please uh, don't hesitate to like my channel and subscribe. Thank you so much. And God bless. God bless.